spell your name for the camera and the microphone. Lillian is my name. L I L L I A N. My last name is Ramey. R A M E Y. That's R A M E Y. Ramey. And your address, your house address is two three zero Third Ave in Indian Atlantic. This is Saturday, June 9th, uh, 2008. Um, Carol Andrew is the interviewer. Lillian, uh, to be inane, let's start at the beginning. Um, where were you originally from? North Carolina. And did you spend all your growing up years there? Absolutely. Is there anything you miss about North Carolina? Of course. What do you miss? My home. My little town I grew up in. I went back there once about five years ago and stayed with a friend of mine and we left her house to go see my home where I grew up after dark. <clears throat> so we parked in front of my home, my home where I grew up. And uh, while we were there, the policeman came up behind us because we had no business being there. And he got out of his car and walked over and he looked at me, he says, oh, Lillian, I should have known. <laughs> that was a great return. Yeah, I thought that so. Was oh, he, he knew me from years back. So to us, that I had come back to my hometown and I was in front of my home, my home, my home. Whoever was living there now, had no business living there. What brought you to Florida? Hmm? What brought you to Florida? Um, my, I was married. My husband traveled a lot, and he was in constru heavy construction. I'm talking about road construction. So we went, excuse me, we went a lot of places. You know, we lived in a lot of places not fun when you're looking for a place to live and you've always lived in your own home forever, you know, your own hometown. And to go somewhere else and they don't know who you are, forget that, Mama. You better know who I am. My name is Lillian Perkins Ramey. So you wound up in Florida. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think you told me the Orlando area was your first. That was first Orlando. Place. We moved to Orlando first and his job was with Hubbard construction company, old name, I go way back, forgive me. Yeah, that's where we moved to. And that was about 40 years ago? Sometime yeah. like that. Okay, go ahead. Right. Lillian, um, how long was it before you came to Indiana? I have no foggy idea. No idea. You moved to Melbourne Beach first, perhaps, yep. and then? And um, I have to think a minute. You were saying you like Melbourne Beach a lot. I like Melbourne Beach by far more than Indy Atlantic. I know you want that on that recording. Have you been here about 30 years in, in East Melbourne Beach, Indy Atlantic? Area? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Lived on that beach, <laughs> raised my sons on that beach. This is where they grew up surfing on that beach. When did you get involved in real estate? About 30 years ago. About the time you moved to this area? Sometime like that. I don't remember it. That, Literally. That when you be, about the time you became a single mom or did you? No, I was a single mom all my life. The, the person I was married to was never there. Oh, I see. Don't ask me these personal questions because no, you don't want straight answers. No, I was just trying to, oh, no, <coughs> I want straight answers. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get a sense of when you came here and what it was like here. Did you like raising your, your boys up here? Your oh, yes, absolutely. You were near the beach. You were near that ocean. We got that river over there. Excuse me, the lagoon. It is a lagoon, not a river. It's called a river. Where did your children go to school? Here, in Indian Atlantic. <coughs> and uh, Melbourne, where that was high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, did you feel that the 
there were things to left things to do here? Or how do, how would you compare it to the Orlando area? Honey, I would rather live here a thousandfold than in than uh, Orlando. <coughs> the Orlando area sucks, if you know what that means. How much of that are you raising? Nothing. <laughs> I know that's <coughs> Uh, no, I did not like the Orlando area at all. Never did. Inland, hot, hot. The beach side, we have a breeze blowing most of the time, which you know. Very pleasant. Yes. Do you remember anything about the old trade rooms? Or how no, except that I remembered when they decided to tear it down and the dumb persons that were city fathers didn't know which end was up. And they decided to tear that down. Dumb. Well, that was, you know, the property owners. Hmm? The, the property owner at that time couldn't build what they wanted to build. So there's, there's been that kind of dissension. The, the building was there yeah. and gorgeous and needed to be left alone, period, left alone. To be there, this little town, this little community did not want the high rises that I'm sure. There's always been a problem with meeting the zoning requirements. In the Tell me about it. Well, real estate, people who have been involved in real estate have a really good idea of what attracts people to this area. I have no foggy idea. As far as I'm concerned, I would secede from the union and not let another person come to our town. It's big enough that people here know one another, or used to, they still kind of do, know one another and care about this little town. What changes have you seen in the town since you've been in the area between Melbourne Beach and Indianapolis? What have you seen happening in the town that's different? Most of the things I don't like, but I don't like change, period. Anything in particular that has happened in the town that I don't like, let's see. Or that you do like. I can't see that I liked anything. I liked it like it was. I could live in the past. You know, I like it like it was. It was a little town, and we didn't have a lot of people that were being bossy because they were not welcome to be bossy. Having opinion is one thing, but being difficult, we've had too much of that in the last few years. And you, you moved in, in Indianapolis, you moved into a, a nice old house. You got that right. Classic. 1920 built, one of the first homes in Indianapolis, or on the beach side actually, that was built. <coughs> it's a concrete stone, um, concrete block home, if anybody knows what concrete it is. It's a block home. The home itself is concrete block. That's what it is. I mean, it's not clay. It's not wood. I have wood floors. Thank you. Thank you, God. I do have hardwood floors. It's a marvelous old home. Do you know who built the house? Um, somewhere in my world is a pile of papers this deep, and in there somewhere I can find out. If I ever look. Be, if you ever come across it, it'd be a good thing. Yeah. To We'd like to know. Mm -hmm. If you have anything. I have find. I have paperwork, original, old original paperwork regarding the town, um, the building of. Let me think. I, I can't remember, but it is original paperwork regarding the the town itself. The town. Okay. If you come across that sometime, you'd, you'd like to 
appreciated you share it with me. Okay. You didn't come in my house a minute ago. I should have. You should have. <laughs> you can look for it. <laughs> I know. I'll come in sometime. Yeah, <laughs> it is one royal mess. <laughs> but I live like that, and, uh, and I'm a happy lady. And people that are not happy, it's their choice. Who are your friends then? Do I have to name them? I, well, I don't know. Don't I, think, <laughs> I think that everyone is my friend. If they're not, that's their problem. Were there any special town people that, that were your friends? Most of the town people I did not like, and they knew it. And if you've ever looked at the notes on the back meetings, you'll know very well that I have never liked whoever was in office or whoever was looking after our town. Most of them didn't know which end was up, and I knew it, and they knew I knew it. And I have been to enough town meetings raising cane, bitching and pissing and moaning, because they don't know what they're doing. Did it ever occur to you to run for town council? It has. I thought I would probably kill everybody over there and it would be better if I didn't do that. Seriously, I did think about it. Seriously. Well, if you were going to run for council, what would your platform be? Move all the damn Yankees out. Well, thank God I'm half Southern. You got it. I can stay. <coughs> you know, there are a lot of people that have moved here, and they're prissy. Prissy, you know prissy? And afraid or won't make um, a commitment, a commitment, I guess is the word. Um, well, you have a pretty natural lifestyle. And you got that right. And so you're sort of, you get a lot of formal people who come in. I don't like. A lot of Yankees. Yeah, a lot of damn Yankees. <laughs> damn Yankees is a word because there are some Yankees that even have some common sense. I've met a couple of them. Now, when <coughs> you wish I would shut up? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> now, when you sell real estate, you have to have a real. I, well, I assume you have a positive attitude when Yankees come. So I do. So, so if you were selling a property in the town, you will never see that attitude. Because the people that live here, there's a certain kind of a an individual that like living here. And those that I'm selling real estate to, some of them, there's no point in showing them this town because they, their attitude would not work here. And they wouldn't like it in the first place. They would not like it. When you find someone you know would, can you sense that kind of person? Oh, yes. And you, you're good at sensing what people are like. Yes, you have to be so when you, you work you, with people. What do you tell them about the town? Nothing. I take them somewhere else. <laughs> well, people Serious. have houses for sale, so don't you want to sell? If the houses are already there, and you think <coughs> that people might be good neighbors, what would you tell them about the town? Somebody you'd like to live here, what would you tell them about the town? I'd sell it to them what would, what would you if tell they them? want to be here. You know, if they want to live in a little town, mm -hmm. and I would impress upon them the fact that this is a little town, this is a little community, the people that live here like it that way, they are not wanting to change anything, except one or two people maybe, and he's finally no longer mayor. Is there anything that you would like to talk about? I keep talking. I talk all you the time. You speak very well. Very eloquently, um, for you from your point of view. Um, so, is there anything that you would like to say about something, our town? Something, yeah, something, <coughs> something really good that keeps you in the town. It's a small community. You yeah. said that. Yeah. And um, it can be a big general thing, like you like 
do you plan to ever go back to North Carolina, or do you like to stay here? Why would you stay here and not go back to home? I'm grinning because why don't you why and I'm not getting rid of you the, listen I'm laughing because <coughs> a friend of mine that lives in my hometown that I grew up with from elementary school on she and I talk periodically and we still talk I mean we can literally talk to one another and so I want to go back and visit Alice and there's a bed available I can walk in that house I can knock on that door and I will knock but once and that door will open and I will be welcome as, a, as you can be and I'll go in and uh, and we will talk a mile a minute she and I because we've known each other and cared so long so you have you have two homes available you go to North Carolina to your friend's home so you don't have the I don't want to move you back there. Move they would not let me move back there. I don't think I'm going to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm serious. They would not want me to move back because I'm expressive. When I speak, and a lot of them there do not want to hear me speak because I am very definitive as far as what I think. You don't ever wonder, you don't ever wonder where I am. Sounds like a southern lady to me. You got that, baby. <laughs> is there anything that you think we could add to this? Any little questions for him? Anything He just wants me to shut up and sit down. No, he's, no, he's doing his job. He's busy. He's happy. I know. What do you think <coughs> the future of Ambient Atlantic is? I just can say what I hope. That it never changes. And the former mayors that I dislike intensely will go away. But they aren't going anywhere. They live locally. And they love it too, I'm sure. Okay. Good or not? Okay. Okay. The fact okay. that we live, I live within a block and a half, two blocks of the ocean. I can hear it roar sometimes. That delights me. I sleep with my head in the window, and at night I can hear that roar of that sea, that earth letting the sea roll in. To me that brings me the most pleasure to hear that sound. because we are, you either like that ocean or you don't live here. You can go away. If you don't like this ocean and that lagoon, go away. And I can invite you to go away in no uncertain terms. But that ocean is there. And I walk down there sometime and I ride down there sometime and I stand on that pier And watch that ocean, that ocean roll, roll in, waves. My son, when he died, I threw his ashes out there. That's where mine will go. Because we love that ocean. And in the Atlantic is a little town that's right on that ocean. I like living here.